once again to our show that is called Real Shames, where we watch movies from our list of movie blind spots or list of shame. I'm Adam. I'm Andy. And this week we're going to talk about uh, a movie and a remake of the same movie. But before we get into that, we always like to t- start off the week talking about what we've been watching. So, Andy, what have you been watching? Uh, so the Olympics are over and football season as we're filming this has not started yet. So I've had a lot of time to watch a lot of (laughs) movies, but rather than sit here all day and talk about all these different movies that I've watched, I just picked two movies to talk about. Both of them are on HBO max. The first one is reminiscence with Hugh Hugh Jackman. Yeah. And I think Rebecca Ferguson, is that correct? I believe so. Uh, It's a Lisa Joy. Tandy Newton. Wrote and directed it, I think. Uh, from West, what, Westworld, yes. Westworld, yeah. Um, I did not like this film, but I do... It has some good things, I, I feel like. Um, I like kind of the world that it's in. It's in a futuristic Miami where Miami is basically flooded. So it's almost like Venice. And the rich people live where the land is dry and they put the water down on the poor people below. Um, and then Hugh Jackman and Tandy Newton run this kind of business where... They can go back into people's memories and and whatever, whatever. But um, the movie itself is a kind of film noir kind of thing. Uh, but I, the plot, I felt like it was just kind of dumb. And I wish it would have been more... I, w- I wish it would have been a just a different story, I guess, first of all. And I wish that it would have been a more complex story, convoluted maybe. I know when we did like Inherent Vice... Yeah. And we talked about how a lot of these old older film noir, oh, that's not old, that old, but like Maltese Falcon and stuff, they're super convoluted, almost almost unnecessarily so. But yeah. I kind of like that about them. And I, I kind of wish they would have done that with this movie and made it more, you know, hard boiled and grittier and, and just had a, like a different plot. I also feel like Rebecca Ferguson, if, I, if that is her name, uh, is miscast. I didn't think she was that great as the, she's kind of the femme fatale of the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Tandy Newton, I thought was really good. I, I would watch a movie about her character because she was really tough as nails and slapped Hugh Jackman into you know into and slapped some sense into Hugh Jackman a, a few times in the movie. But uh, it's it's a mixed bag for sure. It's not terrible. Um, and if you have HBO Max and you feel like watching a newer movie, you know it, you could do worse probably. Yep. But I didn't think it was that great overall. The other HBO Max movie that I watched is Steven Soderbergh's latest movie. It's called No Sudden Move, and I. I kept wanting to call it no small move or no small thing. <laughs> I think no small, no such thing. Maybe it's like a Hal Hartley movie. Maybe that's where I get, I keep get the titles confused, but it's no sudden move. Um, and I like that movie. I, I liked the, uh, no sudden move a lot more than reminiscence. It's a, uh, I guess kind of based on a true story. Hmm. Um, but it's crime movie, uh, Don Cheadle and Brendan Fraser's in it. And, uh, John Hamm and, uh, Kieran Culkin, Benicio del Toro, a lot, lot yeah. of familiar Soderbergh faces yeah. are in it, um, but it's. I, I thought it was good. It was interesting. It. Uh, it. Uh, I, I didn't know where it was going, and I didn't because I, I knew nothing about it. Yeah. I just kind of watched it because it was the new Soderbergh film. So I, I like that. I would. I would recommend that I heard one. Heard a lot of people uh, recalling the Limey too while watching that, or yeah, comparing it to the Limey and stuff. I could. I could see that from what I remember of the Limey. I could see yeah. that. But that's what I've been watching. What Very have you been cool. watching? Uh, so I watched a couple of things. I watched a rewatch for me of first night with, uh, Sean Connery as King Arthur yes. and, um, Richard Gere, Richard Gere as Lancelot. It was, and then was it Madeline Stowe? It's, uh, Sabrina. It's Sabrina. Julia, Julia Ormond. Julia Ormond. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was, I was kind of resistant watching it, but ended up having fun watching it. Yeah. Uh, watch that. I watched something else on HBO max and it's not any of those movies you mentioned. It is. The White Lotus. It's like a six or eight episode series uh, written by um, the same guy who wrote School of Rock, Mike White, I believe his name is. Uh, totally different. <laughs> totally different animal than that. I think he wrote also uh, Transcendence was another show that he watched that he's written that is pretty critically acclaimed. And I think that's probably more in vain with this movie or uh, with this, this series. And it's it's interesting. It's White Lotus basically is about a very uh, nice um, uh, resort on in Hawaii, and it kind of follows a bunch of different patrons there, and it follows some of the staff and stuff like that. And it's 
it's very surface level to me. Um, the movie, like I, some of the reviews I heard, people were like talking about, oh, it's interesting how you can kind of see the plight of, you know, these uh, indigenous people that are from Hawaii and how the resort kind of took their land from them and stuff like that. And there's a line or two to that, but there's really nothing that comes of that, right? And like hearing that, I was expecting a lot more deep nuanced conversation about it rather than just like, oh, this one character just says something to another character and then that's it, right? Uh, and it's really just about like bad people and then bad people kind of getting their comeuppance. I, I, I feel like when I'm talking about it, I sound really negative about it. And I and and I'm not negative on it, but I just think it's it was it was just a a good way to waste my time. It was a it was a fun as fun as this show could be kind of watch for me. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's just it was just something to, good to watch. Is it a self contained miniseries, or is it going to have another season, or is it? Yeah, it's a good question. So originally it was self contained miniseries, but they've announced they're going to make a second season. Um, probably it's going to be more of an anthology show based on how this show plays out. Maybe we'll follow some of the characters again to something else, but I, it's really hard to kind of imagine these same characters in the same kind of resort again, unless mm -hmm. they're like, Hey, sorry about what happened the last time. Here's a free coupon for this other place. And then they all go right. Uh, minus that it's probably going to be some kind of anthology or following one or two characters from, from the show. Uh, yeah. So it's just, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to how to explain much more than that of that of the show. Yeah, I you know, like I said, it, it was just enjoyable. It's a good way to kind of spend, uh, you know, eight episodes when there's nothing else to watch on TV. So that was me. That's kind of what I've been watching: First Night and White Lotus. All right, all right. Well, let's get into our feature review. Let's do it. Julian Marty, or just Marty, as everyone calls him, runs a bar in South Texas. When Marty's wife, Abby, wants to leave him so she can be with Ray, Marty's employee, Marty enlists the help of private investigator Visser to kill them both yep. in the Coen Brothers' debut feature, Blood Simple. I got a job for you. <laughs> oh, well... If he's right and it's legal, I'll do it. It's not strictly legal. Well, he's right, I'll do it. It's in reference to that gentleman and my wife. The more I think about it, the more irritated I get. Right? <laughs> You tell me what it is you want me to do, or is it a secret? It's no joke. You want me to kill him? So Blood Simple is credited. The direction, direction credit goes to Joel Cohen, and the producing credit goes to Ethan Cohen, but in reality, they both kind of co-directed and co-produced the movies. Um, it wasn't until I was reading until the Lady Killers that they finally both received directing credit. Mm. And now from then on, they're both credited as directors, but they've always co-directed their films. They're brothers after all, they're close. Uh, shot by Barry Sonnenfeld, huh? who was the cinematographer that went on to also work with them on Raising Arizona. And Miller's Crossing, then he became a producer and a director. He did the Addams Family movies. He did the Men in Black movies. He did the Get Shorty. He yep. did he recently he's on he's directed several episodes of Schmigadoon on Apple TV. Uh, just like Gilbert Grape, this was shot in the Austin area. Uh, but this does take place in Texas. It does not take place in <laughs> Iowa. Uh, the score is by Carter Burwell, who's another guy that went on to do a ton of Cohen Brothers movies. He works with them quite frequently. And in order to get this movie made. In order to get the funding for this movie, the Coen brothers wrote the screenplay, and then they made just a fake trailer, a fake two-minute or so trailer, uh, showing investors, potential investors, what the movie was going to be kind of about, the style. And in the trailer, Bruce Campbell plays the Julian Marty character, oh, although Bruce cool. Campbell is not in this movie. The Julian Marty character is played by Dan Hedaya, who we saw in Benny and June, which I hated. Uh, in addition to Dan Hedaya playing Julian Marty, you've got Francis McDormand who plays Abby. So 
I, I know that I knew that her and Joel Cohen were married, but I didn't know if they met each other before this movie or during this movie or what. According to what I read, they met when they made this movie. Like that, that's how they got to know each other. Because again, according to IMDb trivia, Holly Hunter was going to play the the Abby character, but she couldn't do it, so she had uh, Francis McDormand auditioned for Abby, and she met Joel Cohen that way, and then they got married afterwards. But they've been married ever since, and Francis McDormand has obviously starred in. A lot of Coen Brothers movies, or been in Coen Brothers movies uh, since then. John Getz is the actor that plays Ray. M. Emmett Walsh, yes, awesome. M. Emmett Walsh plays the private investigator, Lauren Visser. Uh, A guy named Sam Art Williams plays Maurice. Holly Hunter, even though she's not, she doesn't appear in the movie, she is a voice on Maurice's answering machine at one point in the movie. And I didn't know this, but Barry Sonnenfeld does Marty at one point <laughs> vomits in the movie. Barry Sonnenfeld did the Marty vomiting sounds. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, for, for what it's worth. Multi-hyphenate Barry Sonnenfeld. Yes, yeah, cinematographer, producer, director, and vomit sound maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Barry Sonnenfeld Foley, to you. Foley artist extraordinaire. <laughs> yes. Uh, and the title, and I ripped this straight from Wikipedia, the title apparently comes from uh, Red Harvest, which is a book by Dashiell Hammett. Uh, Blood Simple describes the addled fearful mindset of people after prolonged immersion in violent situations. Mm. That's a quote from Wikipedia. So in case you were wondering, what the hell does, does Blood Simple mean? And Very at, at some point, in, in, at one point in the movie, uh, the Visser, the private eye character, talks about going money simple and you're going simple on me and stuff like that. So you can kind of also get a definition from, from that dialogue. But this is a movie that I've seen several times. Uh, I even saw this in the theater back in 2000. Because they did a director's cut around 98, where they actually cut some from the movie. It's three minutes shorter than the uh, other version. But they showed it at the Paramount Theater down there in Austin, and I went and saw it there. But I'd seen it on video prior to that. Uh, But I've seen it, I don't know, three or four times. But I I don't think I've seen it since I saw it at the Paramount Theater 21 years ago. So, you've never seen it. Never seen it. Coen Brothers first feature. I know you've seen other Coen Brothers movies. Seen a few other Coen Brothers movies. What, if anything, did you know about Blood Simple? I didn't know anything about it. Um, I always got this and a simple plan kind of confused. I can see that. Probably because they have the same, they have the word simple in both of them. And simple plan is uh, Sam Raimi. Yeah. And I didn't mention, but they are buddies with Sam Raimi. And they produced it. You can, you can see some of Sam Raimi's style. Oh, there's <laughs> one shot that's very clearly <laughs> yeah. Sam Raimi. And yeah. I was like, oh, In this okay. movie, yeah. Uh, and then what was, um, uh, oh, the, the director's name is leaving me now. Um, uh, what's his last name? Uh, the guy who did 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later did... Uh, Danny Boyle? Danny Boyle. What was his first movie? Shallow Grave. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, Shallow Grave. Right. I get that. I get Shallow Grave confused with this, too. Gotcha. gotcha. So, don't know a lot about this movie. Haven't yeah. seen Simple Plan or Shallow Grave, but now I've seen Blood Simple. I've seen Blood Simple. You know, I like this movie, but, uh... Uh-oh. I feel like this movie would have played better if it was a little bit more um, elevated, if like the characters were a little bit more incompetent. And I'm thinking like like maybe like a little bit more burn after reading kind of thing. Because I feel like they do that really well in a lot of their later on features. And even in like, in, like you have in your notes Fargo, which they directed. Mm-hmm. I feel like Fargo has like, you know, you have some very uh, grounded characters, but then you kind of have these bumbling kind of little character characters in there that kind of spice up the movie and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. Cause I really get the feeling that, you know, Julian Marty is kind of bumbling a little bit. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's mostly through that one scene where he starts cleaning up the crime scene. And I guess later so, Ray, Ray. You Ray, Ray. Yeah. Sorry. Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's the wrong character. Yeah. Uh, well, Ray, Ray, um, he starts cleaning up the crime scene and at that like there's a couple times in the movie where I really had to click back mm-hmm. like and rewatch something because I felt like I missed something you have to pay a lot of attention because like, like the gun movie. went off and I'm like uh, I mean I think yeah. it plays like you, you get like you're supposed to think he got shot but I'm like did the gun go off from kicking because I don't think that really happens with guns yeah well, and like that kind of stuff yeah. so it, that kind of put me off but when he was when he started cleaning like the crime scene, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're going to get, 
your blood all over. You're getting, you're creating more evidence that's going to make you look like the killer. And then I kind of, then I think the movie kind of clues you in a little bit later and you realize that he sees her gun yeah. and he's like, he, he's trying he to do it. her a favor right. and he, he talks to her like, hey, you know, I know what you did. It's cool. Took care of it. So that kind of helped me out on that, that end of it. Um, but so at some point, so at some part of the movie, part of me felt like it would have been better if these guys were more bumbling trying to get their way through it than they actually were in the movie. Mm -hmm. I it, like, again, it's just, it's just a weird, it's, it's a weird thing for me to say, but I feel like it would have made the movie that much better in my eyes. That being said, I like the movie. Yeah. Um, I think you have to have M Emmett Walsh or Ricky J or these guys have to open every movie. Having a open narration by M Emmett Walsh or Ricky J is just, Amazing. Like that's yeah. a, it's a great way to set the tone for the movie. It's great to hear him talk. Like I, I just like the like the way he just kind of delivers lines and southern draw mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And again, he kind of I don't think the movie shows him as incompetent as he could have been in this movie. Because it, like he I don't know. I, I so the reason why I asked that is him leaving the the fish landing on the lighter and the lighter being left behind. Is that just supposed to be like he forgot about the lighter? Like it's supposed to be like, oh, a simple mistake that happened? Or is it just incompetence? Like what do you think that's supposed to read to us, the audience, as, you know? I, I always thought it, it was just yet another reason for him to go back uh, to the bar. And him going back to the bar and seeing that the body is gone. Yeah. And then he knows, but oh, he, now they know. But he had another, I don't think. He, he, he also goes back to the bar to retrieve the, the his. Safe. Yes, yeah, to yeah, the photo. stuff out of the safe. Yeah. The doctored photo yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I don't think he ever, does he ever retrieve the lighter at no. all? No, the lighter is always under there. the fish. But he and never. You know those must stink. Yeah, you yeah, sitting terrible. there for so long. But you know, I don't really feel like he looks for the lighter. Like it's just kind of like it, it's, it's just. Well, I think it becomes, it, it becomes fairly unimportant once he gets back there and finds that the body's gone, oh, okay. and so then he can, knows he that. must do away with them because yeah. now they know or whatever. You know. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. I, yeah. I so that was so I thought that was kind of odd. Again, I felt like it was more supposed to be like he he's not very good, and you know this is more comedic kind of thing. Yeah. Again. Um, I think the part where they're trying to bury, um, uh, Janidea, Julie yeah, Janidea, Dan Hedea's body and he pulls the gun out. It's awesome. Yeah. Like that play is great. And he starts pulling his rigor. Awesome. Well, it, it, I love that part because you see it's made very clear. And again, this is a movie you're rewarded for paying attention yeah. and you should pay very careful attention to what goes on in this movie. And, you're rewarded with repeat viewings of this yeah, movie yeah. because I've seen it several times. So I, and I mean, I hadn't seen it in over 20 years, so I was a little foggy on the details, but knowing, you there's know, kind of knowing three the, bullets the, in the, the gun, the, there's three bullets in the gun. Yeah. One shot goes off to kill him in the first place. The next shot goes off when he kicks the gun. So there's only one bullet left. Yeah. He clicks three times. Yeah. There's a, there's only one, one bullet left. And of course it's the bullet that kills Visser at the end. Yeah. I love that. Like, I think that is so just absolutely brilliant. And I think that kind of, for me, describes this movie. I think it's a brilliant movie. Um, I, I think that, again, there's such a level of detail and there's, if you really pay attention it, to what they say, yeah. there's a lot of things that come back. It, it kind of comes back full circle later. Uh, Dan Hedaya, when he's talking to Ray at the beginning of the, beginning of the movie, uh, well, first of all, when Ray and Abby are driving in the car, and Ray keeps saying, like, oh, I ain't a marriage counselor. I don't yeah. know. And Dan Hedea is like, you know, what are you, a marriage counselor? Whatever, you know, when he's talking to him. Yeah. And he says to him, I can't wait for when Abby says to you, I ain't done nothing funny, Ray. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, I ain't done nothing funny. She says that later in the movie. Whenever he goes to her apartment, yeah, yeah. she's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, Ray. I, I ain't done nothing funny. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's it's thinking like, in his mind, you know, yes. Marty said that he, he would say, yeah, she would yeah. say this even though she really is just saying it completely isn't because she has no idea. It, it's what they don't say in this movie. And the fact that he thinks she killed him, she thinks he killed him. Yeah. And, and, and to me, it's not unrealistic. It, it's not uh, because he doesn't really want to say it out loud because it's a horrible yeah, crime. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't ever really, he, he doesn't, doesn't wanna, say like, the words himself. and he says to her, he was he was alive when I buried him. So she thinks it's plausible that he came back, and that's yeah. why she thinks it's actually him at the end. But she shoots the Visser character. I mean, it's just it's so friggin' smart. Like this movie is just so 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 smart. 
I, I absolutely love it. I, I love the... I, so I don't... I, I actually like the fact that it's not kind of like some of their other films yeah. where, where there's more kind of over-the-top kind of characters or bumbly kind of characters. I like the fact that it's a little straighter than that because I think the rest of their work yeah. is, is kind of all like that. Um, but I, I really like that. I like the Sam Raimi kind of nods. I like the weird tracking shots. Uh, I, the the part where like the camera goes across the bar over the drunk guy's head yeah. and it comes back down and goes... I feel like the oddball stuff is in the camera work. Like that's yeah. where you get kind of the oddball stuff. But uh, I, I really like that the the use of like shadows in the movie. Like when he shoots through the wall, when she stabs his hand and he shoots, and you just got the the light coming yeah. through the holes. It just looks cool. Like all that stuff is is just really really impressive. Uh, the weird scene where she's standing there and the camera follows her as she like lays back down on a bed and then she wakes up in her apartment. Yeah. The dream sequence with Dan Hedaya where he basically just gushes blood all over the floor. There's broken glass where the window would break later when he, you know, when Ray gets shot. Uh, it's just, I mean, to me, everything works in this movie. I just think it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. The other, the other weird cut that kind of took me that, that I had to rewind back was yeah. when he broke, when he was, when, um, M. M. Walsh's character was breaking in the house and they're in the bed. And then like, it, this was like that snap, that uh -huh. flash into, uh -huh. That thing, I guess you're supposed to Goes feel to like... Goes to like a photo almost. Yeah, 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 I guess you're supposed to feel like the, yeah. he killed them, but he took a photo. Right. That, 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 I had to click that back a couple times because it's just like... I feel like there's like three frames in there that I'm like missing like a <laughs> yeah. pertinent piece of information or something like that, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I love that scene because they're laying in bed. She sits up and you, so you've got a shot of her sitting up in front of the window and da-da-da-da-da. And then when she goes back down, the VW Bug is there. The yeah. the, the car that Visser drives is there. I love his banana colored suit, <laughs> you know. And yeah, yeah the M. Emmett Walsh is great because he he's still this M. Emmett Walsh that yeah, you're yeah. typically used to, but he's menacing and he's he's violent, you know. He, he doesn't he doesn't kill them at first. He his his plan is to kill uh, Marty yeah. and leave them alone. But then he's forced to kill them, and he has no qualms about it, right? Yeah. I mean, he's just like, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm taking him out. Uh, so yeah, he, he's very menacing. He plays a good villain, I feel like. No, I agree with that. I, I do have one mild, mild triple with uh, how yeah. he shoots. Um, Ray. Yeah, Ray. Because I, I, cause I don't think, I think it it had to be a rifle uh -huh. at something, but I think it's the same sound that they use for his handgun or whatever when he shoots and i'm like there's oh, I didn't no way you could have you could have done that but yeah i i, I, I he's he's got to be using right he's got like a side on it and everything yeah, right? he's, yeah he would have to i mean yeah. you don't see where he is yeah because it's all from there inside the apartment mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah so, you, you, all you see is the scope yeah you see through the scope yeah oh maybe then that makes a lot of sense yeah so yeah i i think maybe the most accurate thing you said about this watching about this to me or the thing that resonates most with me is it probably is one of those movies that gets better or sweeter every I think, watch. I think it does. Because I do think a lot of it, you know, it's so much information. You're just, you can only digest so much as yeah. the movie's trucking along. And on that surface level, it's enjoyable. But when you start talking about things like people repeating lines and stuff mm -hmm. like that, or things kind of coming to fruition that there were kind of, the seeds were playing earlier, I could definitely, yeah, sinking my teeth into that and would want to, Rewatch it to well, capture all that stuff. And it's one of those things, you know, the movie's 90 minutes long or what, whatever it is that, you know, and again, as I mentioned, the director's cut is even shorter than, than the actual, or the theatrical version that, cause they just, they tightened it up a little. They, they cut some, they trimmed some and, and cut some lines of dialogue and stuff like that. But most of, most, if not all of the detail in the movie is important. Like, yeah. you know, there's very few, if any, unimportant things that happen in the movie. Even the fact that, uh, I, I love the part she wakes up in his house and the dog comes in and she's yeah. like, what's the dog doing yeah, here? It's because, <laughs> it's because Marty is there. Yeah. I also love the fact that everybody calls this guy Marty, including his wife. That just shows you the level of hatred that she has yeah. towards him. She doesn't even call him Julian, which is his first name. Nobody does. That she calls him Marty just like, so there's a, a emotional dis, you know, dis, distance yeah. there. Uh, you know, where she calls him Marty, but she sees the dog 
he basically tries to kill. He's like, let's do it outside in nature or whatever. She breaks his finger. So then later he has like a little thing yeah, on his finger, which makes it harder to do the gun, right? So he's yeah. very slowly doing it with his third finger, which is not a very natural movement. You know, yeah. you know, if, if his index finger worked, he could just sit there and click, 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 yeah. right? You know? Well, he's also um, been shot. And, well, and, he's also been yeah. shot. But <laughs> so not only the he's fact that he's, you know, he's, 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 yeah. he's bleeding out, but his good finger, his yeah. index finger, his trigger finger is broken. I did like how, so, yeah, I mean, I liked all yeah. that scene with them in that grave and just like pulling the gun out because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, oh. Because you, you remember that he put it on him because he was yeah. going to bury him with it, right? Yeah. He's dead. There so is a lot of, of like, the there is a lot of like, I'm putting this block here and this is going to yeah. build this. Like, there's a lot of careful planning, it felt like, Absolutely. in this movie for sure. It's very intricate. Um, and, and again, I just feel like it's a rewarding experience to watch. Just, you know, if, if you haven't seen it, shame on you because you we've spoiled everything. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely worth watching. And it is on HBO Max for what it's worth uh, at the moment. And it is in the Criterion Collection. that They have a, a fancy, fancy schmancy Blu-ray of it that has all that kinds of special features. Space. Yeah, and you can check out the, the trailer for it just on YouTube. The fake trailer that they made with Bruce Campbell. You oh. can check that out on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's readily available. But yeah, this, this movie's cool. The one last thing I was going to say about it, it, I don't know if you have anything else to add, but um, I, I like when when M. Emmett Walsh, the Visser character, does die. First of all, I like the whole water droplet thing. As, he's, which as is, the life is going out of him, that's the last thing he sees. Which, for the movie we're pairing this with, that, that the, the scene that's like that is yeah. very weird. Yeah. Um, but he, she, because she still thinks it's her husband, because she doesn't ever see... Yeah. His face, is, or, yeah. or or who it is, she shoots him, and she's like, "I'm not afraid of you anymore, Marty," or something like that. And he's like, "Well, if I see him, I'll give him the message." <laughs> it's funny because earlier in the movie, when he's talking to Dan Hedaya, and Dan Hedaya makes the whole big spiel about, you know, in ancient Greece, they cut the head off the messenger that yep. would give him the bad news. So again, it's kind of alluding back to that. I yet another example of kind of how this dialogue in the first part of the movie becomes a little more like it has mirror, a little more resonance yeah, yeah. maybe later in the movie and stuff like that so uh yeah it's cool cool movie cool movie very very cool movie and, and i i feel like most people have seen you know big lebowski and all these other fargo obviously yeah, fargo, all these other probably, yeah. uh, coen brothers movies uh but no. blood simple i feel like is very very overlooked no country for old men i see that in there. no country for old men probably right. my yeah pro yeah i i hold that one a, high, a lot of high regard yeah it's good i, I mean that, their whole Oeuvre, yep. the Coen Brothers' body of work is is uh, pretty pretty darn impressive. But so, Frances McDormand, obviously, we're going to work with them a lot, and she is a three time Best Actress winner. This was her film debut. Wow. Uh, Blood Simple was her film debut, and again, had Holly Hunter tried to get the job, maybe it would have been Holly Hunter's uh, not not her first film, but you know, it would have been her in the role. Maybe she would have got married to Joe Cohen. No, oh, I don't know. And then she'd be in no, no man <laughs> no. land. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's 94% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, 88% audience score, two big thumbs up from Siskel and Ebert. I did watch their review of it. They were very enthusiastic about it. And Leonard Malton gives it three stars. That's awesome. All so, right, so what'd you pair this with? Yeah, the movie that I wanted to pair this with is 25 years after this. So this came out in 1984, 25 years later, if my math is correct, I, I believe it is, in 2009, uh, Zhang Yimou, I, I'm sure I'm saying his name wrong, uh, a Chinese director made, he loves Blood Simple apparently, and he made a Chinese remake of Blood Simple. But there's a catch. It doesn't take place in modern times. It takes yep. place in ancient China in a remote area, basically the desert in China. It was originally called a simple noodle shop, but outside of China, known internationally, known as a, a woman, a gun, and a noodle shop. So we will check out that remake on Wednesday. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's our thoughts on Blood Simple. Tell us what you think about Blood Simple. Let us know what your favorite uh, uh, scene where they laid the crumbs and you could see it come to fruition. Let us know. If you're watching us on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening to us, shoot us an email, realshame at gmail.com. We also answer viewer questions on our Wednesday episodes that are sent to us. So please send us your viewers' questions. We would appreciate that to realshame at gmail.com. Uh, we're on social media. We're on Instagram, at realshame. Like, subscribe, share the show, because uh, that really does help spread the word of the show, and we really do appreciate that. And stay tuned for Wednesday as we dive into some noodles. 
and a woman <laughs> mm. <laughs> and see what the gun's about. And a woman, a gun, and a noodle shop. And we'll see you soon, guys. Bye. Bye.